is up you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel i'm gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the brand new 2023 hyundai kona courtesy of jack giambalvo hyundai in york pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below so we are in this one today because the 2023 kona now has more standard features than the 2022 we'll be going over that in this video not only that this is rated by consumer reports as one of the top 10 most reliable vehicles in existence right now it's basically a bunch of toyotas and lexuses and then you got the kona smack dab in the middle of it all so that's pretty cool you get three years or thirty-six thousand miles of complimentary maintenance as well i definitely love that on my sonata that i have right now and you get america's best warranty being five years sixty thousand mile bumper to bumper ten years one hundred thousand miles on the powertrain so a ton of peace of mind for you there as well so ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are several different trim levels for the 2023 kona first one being the se starting at twenty one thousand nine hundred ninety dollars sel which is the one we are in today starting at twenty three thousand eight hundred and line for twenty seven thousand seven hundred and the limited for twenty eight thousand eight hundred by the way that was all pricing for the front wheel drive configuration if you wanted to add all wheel drive you can do that to any of those trim levels simply add fifteen hundred dollars then and by the way Prices are actually $145 less than the 2022 model year. That's the first time I've seen that for the 2023 reviews that I've done so far. Typically, they're around five to $800 more than the previous year because of inflation right now, but $145 less. Well done, Hyundai. I give you credit for that. But anyways, then touching on the power plants, as you can imagine with all of those trim levels, there are a couple different options when it comes to the power plants for the Kona. First one being a two liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder. This engine is going to belong to the SE and SEL trims like we have today. 147 horsepower at 6,200 RPM, 132 pound-feet of torque coming in at 4,500 RPM. Power set the front wheels or all wheels through an IVT. And by the way, that's new for 2023. Previously in the 2022 model year for this engine configuration, that was a six-speed automatic. Nonetheless, zero to 60 time is going to come in at approximately 9.2 seconds with MPG numbers coming in at 30 in the city, 35 on the highway for the front wheel drive, 28 in the city, 33 then on the highway for the all wheel drive taking regular unleaded fuel. But so then there is that other engine configuration belonging to the N line and the limited trims. That one is powered by a 1.6 liter turbocharged inline four cylinder, putting out 195 horsepower at 6,000 RPM, 195 pound feet of torque coming in at 1500 RPM. Again, sent to front wheels or all wheels, but this time, through a seven speed dual clutch with paddle shifters. That is a pretty substantial difference. Essentially what that means is you're gonna get insanely quick reacting times with the paddle shifter, so it's gonna be fun to drive there. And insanely quick shifting times in general because that's what a dual clutch is. They're amazing transmissions when it comes to performance at least. Zero to 60 time, approximately 6.6 .6 seconds, so substantially quicker. MPG numbers coming in at 29 in the city, 35 on the highway for the front wheel drive, 27 in the city, 32 then on the highway for the all wheel drive. But Again, taking regular unleaded fuel. Well done, honey, for that. But anyways, before we do any kind of fun acceleration test here in the Kona, I wanted to mention to you guys the drive modes. There's actually a circular dial located just to the left of the shifter that's going to give you normal, sport, and smart, adjusting things like the shift points, throttle response, and the steering sensitivity. And like I said, if you go with the uh, upgraded 1.6 liter turbocharged engine, you're gonna get paddle shifters as well. So anyways, we don't have those paddle shifters, so what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find a straightaway. I'm gonna put it in that fun driving mode, AKA Sport, and let's do a quick little acceleration here, and let's see how quickly we can get our new 2023 Hyundai Kona here up to speed in the rain. All right, let's just do it here. Three, two, one, go. All right, no slipping. First, I want to say that we do have the all-wheel drive, so that's nice. Definitely holding the RPMs at a higher level. Eh. It's definitely on the slower side of things, if I'm being completely honest. Keep in mind, we don't have the upgraded engine, and this is the naturally aspirated engine, which more than likely is gonna be a heck of a lot more reliable. Um, probably both of them are gonna be fine according to consumer reports, but still, this is gonna be the more reliable engine. So typically, when you get those more reliable engines, you do tend to sacrifice acceleration slightly. So having said that, it's kind of on the slower side of things. I think everybody knows that from that zero to 60 number. But anyways, 
to go along with that acceleration is always braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 11 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 10.3 inch solid rear discs. As far as that 60 zero stopping distance goes, it's going to come in at 132 feet, which quite honestly isn't the best, but let's go ahead and uh, let's get a little bit faster and let's hit the brakes. Braking feels actually really good. I think I might have said that last year, I don't remember, but brakey feel is 100% on the firmer side of things, so despite that number, I would be perfectly fine with this just because the braking feel is on the firmer side of things, so it does feel like that 60 to zero number should be in the like the lower 120s because it, it feels really good, if I'm being quite honest. So I don't know where I got that number from. It was probably Motor Trend, but throw it out the window because the braking feel is absolutely 100% on point here in the Kona. But anyways, then touching on suspension and handling, up front you're gonna get a McPherson strut front suspension, but the rear suspension is gonna differ pretty substantially. So for the front wheel drive configuration, you're gonna get a Torsen beam rear axle. For the all wheel drive configuration, you're gonna get an independent multi-link rear suspension. So you're gonna get better handling, better ride quality if you go with the all wheel drive just because you get the independent multi-link rear suspension. So wanted to mention that, but anyways, gas pressurized shock absorbers as well. As far as ride quality goes, it's fine. It's pretty much as you would expect the Kona to ride like. So I've had absolutely no issues. As far as steering feel goes, let me actually put it in sport driving mode it's still kind of on the looser side of things it does uh kind of make the steering feel a bit heavier when you put it in that sport driving mode as expected like i alluded to but and it is a noticeable difference but still it's kind of on the softer side of things or the lighter side of things when it comes to that steering feel so it's pretty much as you would expect the kona to feel like there touching on cabin noise that's been perfectly fine in my short test drive here today i know in a lot of hyundais in the past you get a little bit of road noise or wind noise i should say at higher speeds but i didn't even notice it so far in uh in the kona test drive that i've done here and i've gotten over 50 miles per hour so actually cabin noise is pretty much on point for this one touching on visibility i can see perfectly fine out the back definitely not going to have any issues with a smaller suv like the kona anyways but so that about rounds out the performance segment of this review guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2023 hyundai kona all right so here she is you guys the new 2023 hyundai kona finished in ultra black in case you were curious of our exterior color name that is what they call it but let's go ahead and start up front as always hyundai logo is sitting of course just in front of the hood i know a couple years ago it was sitting within the front grille so i do like the new look sitting on the hood there front air curtains you can see those to the bottom corners there, helping direct air around the wheel and tire combination so a little better aerodynamics there if you were to go with that end line, that's actually going to give you a unique front fascia. So it is going to be pretty substantially different than what you're currently looking at right now. To the sides, you're going to get projector style halogen headlights for all trim levels, but the limited, because of course the limited trim level is going to give you LED headlights coming standard. And by the way, when it comes to the location of the headlights, as the rain picks up here, headlights are actually going to be located just below, whereas the daytime running lights are going to be located on the upper portion there, in case you were curious. So headlights are kind of uh, just in the middle there. So so I wanted to mention that as well. Automatic feature, of course, coming with this headlights, meaning when it starts to get dark and at night, they will turn on automatically for you there. And if you were to go with the limited, you're also going to get automatic high beams as well. So if you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction, it's going to automatically dim them back to low beams. Then when that vehicle is gone, it's going to automatically then bump it back up to high beams for you though. But that pretty much rounds out the front end of this one. Actually really looks good in my personal opinion. I love the look of the Kona, but anyways, Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side of this one. It's up and now making our way to the side of the Kona. Roof rails are going to come on the SEL trim level and up. Rear privacy glass coming again on the SEL trim level and up, and that's why we have it there today. Floating roof line towards the back. You can't really tell because it's black and we have a black exterior, but that is going to be there as well. Black window surrounds also coming standard. Then taking a look at the side mirrors, they are body color power adjustable side mirrors, but now standard for all trim levels for 2023. This is another one of those changes for this year. Heated with LED integrated turn signals, also going to come standard for all trim levels. That didn't come standard for 2022, so I wanted to mention that. Matte black fender surrounds are gonna come standard on all trim levels, but the end line, because the end line, again, is gonna change them to body colored fender surrounds and side skirts, really body colored accents all the way around this thing. Then take a look at the wheel configuration, 16 inch alloys for the SE, 17 inch alloys for the SEL, and then 18 inch alloys for the end line and the limited. And I actually really like the design of the wheels that we have on our SEL trim level here today. So 
Anyways, that pretty much rounds out the side profile here. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, so but now since we are around to the back of the Koenig here, body colored shark fin antenna all the way to the top. Just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light. Just below that rear window wiper. LED taillights, if you wanted them, are gonna come on the limited trim level only. Of course, you got some all wheel drive badging back there on the lift gate if you were to go with an all wheel drive trim level. Nice silver accenting towards the bottom portion of that rear fascia. And I did wanna mention there is a rear diffuser if you go with the N-line trim level. Obviously, we don't have that with us here today, but single exhaust outlet tucked away there on the passenger side underneath. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. Alright, so but now since we are around to the back of the Kona, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, it is a manual tailgate that just comes standard for all trim levels across the board. Once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 19.2 cubic feet behind that second row. If that was not enough space, of course, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down, bumping that up to 45.8 cubic feet. There, of course, is some cargo lighting back there. There actually are grocery bag hooks back there as well. There is a cargo cover. You have some tie-down anchors. There is a little bit of kind of indented storage on the right side in the back there. And if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor, you were actually going to find a spare tire, which I personally prefer as opposed to the fix a flat. So I did want to mention that as well. And there is a little bit of storage. I guess you could put an ice scraper in there as well. So anyways, very nicely done. Then making our way up to the rear legroom, that is going to come in at 35.2 inches. So for reference, I'm an even six feet tall. This is how much space I had in those back seats there. And they are reclining by the way. So that is pretty cool. A little added comfort there. Rear center armrest with cup holders does come standard. However, there is no rear ventilation, but there is a USB charging port. I don't remember seeing that on the 2022 Kona. So that may be yet another change for the 2023. So big fan of that little bit of storage next to that as well then making our way up to the front seats cloth seating coming with the se sel and n line trims however limited is going to give you leather seating if you were interested eight weight power driver seat for the sel trim level and up which by the way was only available on the n line trim level and up for 2022 so yet another small change for 2023 there heated front seats for the n line and the limited and overall as far as seat comfort goes eh, it was plenty fine nothing really crazy but it'll definitely get the job done i personally didn't have any issues there let's take a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it is leather wraps for the n line limited and then optional for the s SEL if you wanted to leather wrapped, but we don't have that option. So we do get it wrapped in urethane. That's what you guys are looking at. Then make our way to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key. You got your Hyundai logo on the one side and when you flip it over, lock, unlock, and actually that circular button, that's gonna be remote start. So that's pretty cool as well. And that's for the SEL trim leveling up along with keyless entry with a push button start for the SEL trim leveling up as well. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just by the driver's right knee. And so once started up, now the gauge cluster is going to differ again amongst the trim level. So if you were to go with the N line or the limited, you're gonna get a 10 and a quarter inch digital gauge cluster, and that's gonna look absolutely amazing. If you don't, if you go with the SE or SEL trims, you're gonna get what you're currently looking at. Tachometers on your left, speedometers on your right. There's a small digital display front and center to control what is on that digital display. There are steering wheel mounted controls found on the right side of the steering wheel, giving you things like a digital speedometer, which looks pretty darn cool. Nice little background graphic there. That's probably what I would leave it on. There's also uh, tire pressure information, how many miles you have left until you hit empty, of course. When you need your next oil change, the list goes on. So I'm gonna leave it on that digital speedometer. I think that looks pretty darn cool. But now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality. If you wanted a power sunroof, go with the limited. That's the only way you're going to get it. Black headliner is going to come with the N line, black interior accents also with that N line along with alloy foot pedals. Wireless phone charger is going to come on the N line limited and optional for the SEL. Automatic climate control, same thing, N line limited and optional for the SEL. Auto dimming rear view mirror with home light controls coming with the limited trim level only. There is also a overhead sunglass holder. It's going to come standard on all trim levels. Just in front of the shifter, you're going to get a couple USB charging ports, a 12 volt power outlet, and a little bit of rubberized storage up there. I do want to also mention to the right of the shifter, that little lock button that's going to lock this thing in all wheel drive. If you're driving through the snow here in PA, perhaps that's what I do on my Santa Fe, at least just behind the shifter, you have dual cup holders and within the center armrest, a little bit of storage, pretty much as expected expected there. So overall, everything's kind of on the basic side of them being honest, everything from the door handles to the doors themselves. So 
It'll get the job done though for the price point and for the reliability that this thing gives you. I'm not too worried about it, but let's take a look at the infotainment screen. This is where Hyundai always crushes it. So eight inch color touchscreen display coming with the SE and SEL. That's what you guys are looking at, but 10 and a quarter inch color touchscreen display coming with the N-Line Limited and that's gonna be optional on the SEL. But either way you get Bluetooth and audio streaming, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, but if you go with the SE or SEL, the eight inch screen essentially, you get wireless. Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So a lot of manufacturers will just give you wireless Apple CarPlay right now, but Hyundai for the eight inch screen at least gives you both wireless Android Auto for my phone and Apple CarPlay as well. So that is pretty darn cool. I absolutely love that. Well done Hyundai. I still don't know why they don't put it on the 10 and a quarter inch screen, but I still love it that it's on the eight inch screen. So anyways, you can also check out your radio information up there, of course. And when it comes to the sound systems, there's two of them. Six speakers is going to come with the SE, SEL, and N line. Then with the limited, you're going to get an eight inch Harman Kardon sound system. So what do you guys say? I think you know what we have to do next. Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today. And let's test out our six speaker sound system that we have with us here today. You got me so it's okay. It sounds like a six speaker sound system. It's pretty much as I expected. The bass isn't the most I've ever heard. Clarity was pretty decent for six speakers, but it sounds like a six speaker sound system. I'm just going to put it that way. But anyways, last thing I want to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the Kona in reverse, you will find a rear view camera that does come standard for all trim levels across the board, letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so front side side curtain airbags do come standard. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system. But then also coming standard, and there's more upgrades here, blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert. That's newly standard for 2023. It did not come standard on 2022. So that's pretty cool. Forward collision avoidance assist with pedestrian detection, lane following assist, lane keep assist, driver attention warning system, safe exit warning as well. And then if you were to go with the limited, that is going to add to that rear parking sensors, highway driving assist, which is kind of like Hyundai's level two autonomous driving system and high beam assist as well. So overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the Kona, excellent reliability specifically, especially with our naturally aspirated four cylinder engine that we have with us here today. America's best warranty as well. Not that you really need it because of the reliability ratings by consumer reports, three years of free maintenance is going to save you some money there as well. End line styling personally would be my preference when it comes to styling, at least because you get the body colored accents. Having said that it's not necessary for me, but I do like the body colored accents on this thing. Great price point, great starting price point as well. Of course you add the all wheel drive, it's another 1500, but, and I probably would because I live in PA and we get snow quite a bit, but still great starting price point nonetheless. As far as room for improvement goes, of course this base engine is going to be slow, but if you wanted more power, it is available. So I can't really knock it for that. The only thing I could really think of is magic seats, kind of like Honda HRV does in the back where it flips up kind of like a pickup truck would. I think that's pretty darn cool. There's a ton of utility there and you could put larger things or animals, maybe a Great Dane or a Mastiff back there if you wanted to like that. So anyways, I would add that Hyundai if you're watching this and that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you guys think of the Kona in the comments section below. I always read your comments. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button. If you're into new car reviews, that is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.